Okay, on this video, we've got to break down exercise and menopause because it's a whole different game. I don't know if you've noticed that, but after 40, because of the decline in estrogen, there is a massive shift in collagen and creatine, which requires a very different approach to your workouts. So on this video, I'm gonna break down what are some of the key things you can do to stay fit as you are going through this menopausal transition, or some of you are way past it and you're just trying to hold on to muscle and figure out ways to balance hormones. So on this video, I wanna go through recent studies, what do we know about exercise and menopause, and then I wanna give you some really clear action items so you can love living in this body of yours. Ready? Let's go. Okay, first, here, here's the deal. When estrogen goes down, so does collagen and creatine. So collagen, I mean, we see it in the face, we see it in the wrinkles, but we don't always see it in the joints. And so a lot of times the exercise, more than a lot of times, most times the exercise we did in tw at 20 and 30, all of a sudden starts to injure us. So I'm, I'm the classic example. I was a competitive athlete. I played tennis, a competitive tennis in college. And when I came out of college in my 20s, I became a runner. I love running, I love trail running. And when I hit my 40s, all of a sudden, the activity that I absolutely loved kept injuring me. And I put in the comments if that is any of, I know a lot of you have had that experience. And so this is primarily because you don't have as much collagen, so that cushion isn't there in the joints. You also don't have as much creatine. So estrogen helped stimulate collagen and creatine in your body, and creatine is what keeps your muscles and your tendons really strong. So think of it like you're just losing that support system so those endurance exercises, those of you that are extreme exercisers, all of a sudden find that you start injuring yourself in your 40s. Now, on the flip side of this, and we're gonna marry this all together, but on the flip side of this, actually some of the science I'm gonna show you today shows that when we do exercise in our menopausal years, we can increase estrogen, we can increase progesterone, and we can increase testosterone. We also know that there's specific ways of exercising that actually can help you become more insulin sensitive again. Remember, estrogen goes down and all of a sudden you look at a piece of food and gain weight? Well, you can actually use exercise to make yourself be more insulin sensitive and really help amp up that metabolism. So let's dive into what those exercises are. The first I want to say is the intensity in which you work out is important because you want to stretch at a time, you want to start off slow, like you want to you want to be a little more gentle into your workouts. You can't just jump into the workout like you used to because of the lack of collagen and creatine. And I want you moving every single day. This doesn't mean that you are like exercising hardcore every day but I want you moving your body every day. So if you've been following me here for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of the evolutionary explanation for menopause. It's actually coming out in my new book called Age Like a Girl, ready for pre-orders now, and I explain that there is a fitness shift that happens that is built into our evolutionary design. And what your evolutionary design is, is to move your body every single day when you're in those, that peri uh, menopausal years, the menopausal transition, and even into your post-menopausal years. Now, from a research standpoint, I can tell you, this is there were a couple really cool studies that I found. Uh, the 2019 study showed that women who worked out at least three times a week were 60% less likely to have menopause symptoms. So, you know, I think, hopefully you've heard me say this before, that there's a lot of us that are just praying that the creams and the patches and the pellets are gonna calm that hormonal storm. But what when we look at studies like this, 60% less severe menopause symptoms when people, when women are working out three times a week. 
There's also an incredible study of, out of the Journal of Menopause, a 2024 study that found consistent exercise, so that means you're doing it on a regular basis, really improved sleep quality, anxiety, depression, fatigue, and bone density. So there are three types of exercise I want you to think about when you go into those menopausal years and specifically when you're in your postmenopausal years. Ready for them? First, walking. Now, I have to tell you as a competitive athlete, it took me a long time to actually embrace walking as a form of fitness. But well, those of you that get aged like a girl, what you're gonna learn is that when we go back to the hunter and gatherer days, we go back to those primal days, what women did when they moved out of their reproductive years and they moved into their post-reproductive years is they all of a sudden became foragers. What that means is their postmenopausal job was actually to go for a seven hour hike every single day. It's something called the grandmother hypothesis and what the grandmother hypothesis says is all that energy that went into reproduction and to releasing an egg every single month now is returned back to you and it is meant to go into three areas of your life and one of those is fitness. Because when we go back to the primal days, what we know is in the primal days, the post-reproductive woman, the grandmother of the tribe, was the one that went and forged for food every single day, seven hours she walked. Now, she wasn't running for seven hours, she wasn't doing a marathon, it was low to moderate intensity. And what's so beautiful about low to moderate wa intense walking is when we look at the research on it for menopausal women, it's like mind blowing. So check this out. A 2023 meta-analysis in the Journal of Endocrinology, it looked at over 100 different studies on 5,000 post-menopausal women. And it found that low to moderate intensity aerobic exercise was the best option for both fat loss and muscle preservation. Okay, that lines up with our primal design. This is what they did every single day. The hunter and gatherers went walking every single day. So here was the key. It's not like you can just go randomly five minutes here, walk the dog there. It had to be 150 minutes a week of aerobic movement. And it's not like you're not just kind of strolling. You need to walk with a little bit of a purpose. If you go back to what I taught you in Age Like a Girl, again, it's coming out if you don't have it in your hands yet, I talk a lot about the behaviors of our primal postmenopausal women. And one of their behaviors was to gather together around the, the fire the side, you know, the clan every morning, and they would go on these forages to get food and bring them back to feed the tribe while the men were off doing big animal kills. And they didn't, men didn't come back for weeks sometimes and sometimes they didn't come back with an animal kill. So it was the post-menopausal women that went walking every single day. But they had a focus, they had to go get food, they had to work together, so they weren't strolling, they were walking. So 150 minutes a week is 22 minutes a day. This is not a lot of time, but this is not a light stroll. This is a serious walk with a low to moderate rate. Personally, I like walking hills because it gives you that, it elevates that um, your heart rate, gives you a little more of an endurance push. Remember, I've talked a lot on here about um, rucking, putting a weighted vest on, can add to that aerobic capacity. 22 minutes a day, not a lot. Okay, the second activity is one that I have named sprocking. Now, let's explain what sprocking is. I used to call it sprunning in my 30-year-old years. Um, and once I hit my mid-40s and into my 50s, I'm like, I can't sprun anymore, I need to sprock. So what is sprocking? Sprocking is where you are walking like I just talked about and then you sprint and then you pause for a minute and you walk a little bit and then you sprint. 
Sprocky. So if you want more intensity, what you can do is this is a form of HIIT training. I'll go, let's go back a decade ago. Anybody remember Tabatis? I don't know that he was a Japanese scientist. And check this out. What he found is that he put two groups of people on treadmills and he made them walk at different paces. One group, this was both men and women, one group, what he had them do was walk at the same pace, kind of like I just explained to you in the first, the first tip of walking. And he had them walk at a pretty, pretty fast clip for 45 minutes. The second group, he had them sprock. He didn't call it sprocking, but he had them sprock. And at sprocking, what he had them do is, is sprint, like run, like a full on sprint for 30 seconds on and then 90 seconds off. And he had them do that for 20 minutes. What he found is the group that did this 20 minute sprocking routine is that they actually burned calories up to 24 hours after the activity. So that, let's just rephrase that. Their metabolism elevated for 24 hours after the workout compared to the other group that just walked at a, at a very uh, consistent pace. Those people burned calories and had great energy during the walk, but once the walk was over, they didn't burn any more calories and the metabolism didn't go up. The other thing we know is when you get your heart rate up and down and up and down like Sprocking provides, is that it actually stimulates growth hormone. And growth hormone, you stop getting at 30, and it is the precursor to every other hormone in your body. So you can mix these two. You could go for a 20 minute walk and then 20 minutes you actually start to sprock where you throw in these sprints. Now a really cool 2002 review found that, in, this was in the Journal of Sports Medicine, found that the bur these bursts of intense aerobic ac exercise causes large increases of growth hormone. Now, if you pair that, by the way, with fasting, fasting also creates large increases in growth hormone. So all of a sudden, we're now getting that anti-aging, fat-burning hormone. You are making it yourself by doing this sprocking style of workout in a fasted state. Now, the authors of this study noted that the increase in growth hormone is especially good for older people because it preserves muscle. It then went on to talk about how it will help you burn fat and improve your metabolic fitness. And the study itself said that sprocking can be done 10 minute workouts. Just do five rounds of walking for 90 seconds and then sprint for 30 seconds. You can do it one to two times a week. It's a lot of fun. Uh, do it with a friend and now you're getting that oxytocin with bonding with another human. Guess what? Age Like a Girl, my new book, it's ready for pre-orders. And this is the most personal book I have ever written. And I'm so excited to bring it to you. If you are looking to reinvent yourself through the menopause process, or maybe you're on the other side and you're still looking for that reinvention, I'm gonna show you exactly why menopause works in your favor and how you can make it your greatest moment yet. Age Like a Girl. Okay, third exercise that you should do. And this is one we're hearing a lot about, and not all of us love it, but it doesn't have to be done a lot. You don't, it doesn't have to be time consuming, and it's lifting weights. And what's really interesting about lifting weights, so I want you to crawl into your muscle with me for a second. When we force our body to lift weights, what we're telling the muscle, muscle to do is to activate itself. If it cannot carry that load that you just gave it, you will actually break down muscle fibers. This is a good thing. Because in this breakdown of muscle fibers, there is a metabolite that gets released from the breakdown of muscle that goes up into the brain and tells the brain to make BDNF. BDNF is brain-derived neurotropic factor, and it is a key component to cognition. And guess who had an amazing relationship with BDNF? Estrogen. So when estrogen was just coming naturally to you, 
what happened is you got these surges of BDNF. And so it helped you hold on to information. It helped with cognition. But now that estrogen is, is exiting, you have less estrogen than you ever had before, you need to go find ways to go get BDNF so you can keep that cognition really high. And when we lift weights, we do, it really helps break that muscle down. You know you're breaking muscle down, by the way, if you're sore the next day. So we want the soreness, we want the muscle break. You want to lift these heavy weights. To, and, and I've talked to a lot of people around menopause and weightlifting, and everybody agrees that you're looking at as little as eight reps of lifting weights, but it has to be the max you can do. So, and it could be like four to five exercises. It could be like bench presses, overhead, squats, lunges. It doesn't have to be sophisticated. You don't have to hire a trainer, but what you do have to do is push yourself to max ability, which is almost like you can barely hold them or you're pushing it up and you're like wobbly and shaky. That is your max and you wanna do eight of those. And then you do it three times, three sets of eight total. Now the study on lifting weights is mind blowing. There's a 22 study that shows that when, I uh, found that weightlifting increases estrogen and testosterone in all women. A 2018 study showed that weightlifting increased estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Um, and it even went on to say, it, weightlifting, check this out, for those of you who are looking for better hair, that it improved follicle stimulating hormone, which is important for keeping your hair shiny and healthy. There's a 2020 study showing that it increased IGF-1, which is the hormone that controls blood sugar. And there's a meta-analysis, 2023 meta-analysis that showed that weightlifting can reduce menopause symptoms. And it, it specifically, check this out, hot flashes, um, better sleep, more energy, and it improved bone density. So when we look at this from a picture, a bigger picture, we know we need walking, we know we need sprocking, we know we need weightlifting. I'll even throw in there some flexibility and balance. I have a whole chapter in Age Like a Girl where I go through how you all should be exercising. I even gave you protocols that are in there. In fact, if you put age like a girl in the comments, my team will send you a link to some of those protocols. We've already, we've already got some of them out and getting them out into you, into the world. So you just put age like a girl in the link and we'll send you that. And exercise has never been more important for you. So you wanna be doing it on a daily basis. You wanna mix it up so you don't get injured. And you wanna make sure that you're using it to improve not only your hormonal profile, but key members that estrogen really helps stimulate, like BDNF. So fitness, once we go into our menopause years, is more than just looking good. It's actually a tool for better brain function. So, I hope that helps. Put in the comments. I'd love to know if you have, uh, you know, if you have a favorite workout. We all learn from each other. And like I said, age like a girl. It's out for pre-order. If you pre-ordered it, put it in the comments. I'm so excited to get this book to you. I have spent years researching this, and the last six months, I have locked myself in a room and have been have been writing this, and it is now out for pre-orders. I can't wait to get it into your hands. So as always, I hope that helps. So if you love this video, you're gonna wanna check out this video. It's kind of the sucky part of menopause is that we get a toxic dump. So when we look at unwinding the menopausal weight, we've got to look at making you insulin sensitive and look at detox.